Now, I'm not saying I'm a hero, but I did finish Dave Hollis's newest book. It, and it was rough. I have four major issues with how this book was put together. And I'm going to start with the kind of the most benign and then work to the most severe. First, Dave Hollis is the wrong guy to write this kind of personal development book. When you look at the traditional personal development book, it follows the exact same pattern. Point, example, and then application or some kind of refinement of that point, right? I'm going to talk to you about habits. I'll communicate how you make a habit. And then I'll give you a story about how habits were created. And then I'm going to refine that description. That's what Dave Hollis did throughout this book. Now, you have a choice as the author to use yourself for the example or you use other people that have found success as the example. Dave Hollis, just based on his background and his experiences, is not someone who I find incredibly inspiring. I don't want to hear about his personal development story. He's not a David Goggins, right? David Goggins can use himself as the example because he has been through hell and back and found success. Dave Hollis is talking about himself as though he has overcome mountains And I happen to have just watched a live stream where he looked totally unhinged. This is my calling. I don't have a choice. I was brought here and I'm not leaving. I may in fact have gotten up just a tiny bit early. My mouth is just a tiny bit dry right now. So you might be hearing my tongue sticking to the roof of my mouth. It's because I'm fired up. Is it on audible? Darn right it's on audible. I read it and I read it in a tone that is far calmer than the one that I am trying to encourage you to buy right now. Dave, you're talking about peace, aren't you? No, I'm talking about buying my book. We got- so I don't believe that he's really made it through all of this. I find it totally uninspiring. And I think that that derails the book because at each point when he's talking about how he's found meaning or how he's so present for his kids or how he's so thoughtful on his you know, patio of peace, I just call out bullshit. And, I'm, and, I've, and I'm, it, it prevented me from really buying into it. If this book had been about how to uh, find success in corporate America and he wanted to walk me through his career at Disney, no kidding, all all kidding aside, I'm in. I would love to know how a guy, there's thousands of people that work at Disney and thousands of them have his same background and experience and horsepower and all of that and Dave Hollis was successful. How he did that, I'm interested. I am not interested in learning about how Dave Hollis manages his anxiety or or overcomes the distress of a divorce, which happened a year ago. It's not inspiring. Dave should have written a different kind of book. He should have called out other people that had overcome incredible challenges and used their lives as the example. Second, this book was way too broad. It covered it covered so many different topics at just a very surface level. Dave is not an expert on any of these topics, so what he did was he just sort of rapid fire moved through all of these different leaders and, and, and experts, right? So he's like, you know, James Clear told me about habits and, and Carol Dweck about growth mindset and, you know, Ryan Holiday about stoicism and Jay Shetty about perspective and boom, 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 boom. And it's like, Dave, if you would just slow down and pick one of these topics and talk about it at some depth, give good examples and help us learn about that topic, it'd be a much more impactful book. And my third issue with this book is that I think the foundation is broken and I think it's actually damaging. Dave's whole point is you need to figure out what that one thing is in your life that's meaningful to you, that one thing that gives you passion, and you need to leave your safe harbor and pursue that one thing. In my opinion, in my experience, there is no data anywhere from any psychologist that suggests that that's how you pursue your life's passion. It's just simply not true. It is Dave Hollis mimicking of what's that movie uh, like city slickers do you know what the secret of life is no what this your finger one thing just one thing you stick to that and everything else don't mean shit that's great but what's the one thing that's what you gotta figure out your life has many 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 sources of meaning I think about this from the, like the lens of Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, which changed the way I thought about this. The, in the book, he, this is one of those books where the author is able to describe a horrible experience and their transition through it. 
Viktor Frankl talks about being in a concentration camp. He has lost his family. He's lost his, lost his livelihood. He is in this concentration camp, and he starts caring for the other prisoners in that camp. And for him, being able to give soup to the other prisoners becomes really, really meaningful. So much so that when they were freed by the Americans, Victor stayed there and kept helping the sick until everybody was safe. That became meaningful for him. You should pursue your passions by looking at your life and figuring out what are the areas of my life that I actually derive meaning? What are those things? And find your passions there. Right, so it, when you think about that in the, in the depth of what Viktor Frankl is talking about, it's so far away from the sort of cavalier and I think superficial and a little bit tone deaf way that Dave Hollis is talking about. Figure out what your what 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 lights your heart on fire or whatever he was saying, and, and and pursue that thing. It's just not realistic. And my last issue with this book is that there are major religious undertones throughout the entire book, and, and I don't have a problem with someone's faith being part of their personal development. But my concern is Dave's, the way that Dave's using it. What Dave is saying is, you were put here on this planet by God to do one thing. Figure out what that one thing is. Otherwise, you are underutilizing your special gifts. This is why he's been hammered online for him saying, I was given here with this God-given talent to be a leadership coach, and that's what I'm doing, and you're going to see that skill. Right? There's this... this it, it, I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to say I'm leaning into my passions, but what the way I hear it and the way I'm worried his audience will hear it is, hey, if you pick the wrong thing, you're not doing what God wants you to do. That's a lot of pressure, and I don't think it's beneficial at all. I think it's totally uh, naive and misguided on Dave's part. So I didn't like the book. I, I really didn't like the book. I, I'm curious what people think. Let me know in the comments, and if you, if you found value from this video, please uh, hit the like button. Subscribe. All right. Thanks for listening.